Hello everyone, OSU Harding One here with a video to demonstrate how I've incorporated power functions into the 2012 LEGO Technic set number 9395, which is the pickup tow truck. Right here. If any of you have watched my LEGO Technic collection video here on YouTube, you might recall that I intended to incorporate power functions into this set, and this video fulfills that intention. If you haven't seen my Technic collection video, I recommend you watch it or any of my time-lapse videos demonstrating the time-lapse build of some of the Technic models. Just click on the More From button to see my videos. I'll be updating my collection videos soon, so check back often to see the latest. Back to model 9395 here. Normally I post a time-lapse build of the Technic model prior to posting modification video like this one, but unfortunately I didn't have the necessary electronic equipment at the time I was building this model to create the time-lapse video. I have here the box for the 9395 and the 90, excuse me, the 8293 uh, power function kit. <clears throat> if we look here on the back side, you can see that uh, Lego had already zoom in here a little bit. Lego had already intended to include the power functions with this model. And uh, you can see here from the bigger picture that uh, Lego had made kind of a suggestion here putting the battery box um, right here behind the the cab and the motor is back here just below the tow dolly. <clears throat> so it's obvious that this model was was designed and built with power functions in mind. And here to show show you a few in a few minutes, I'll show you what I mean by uh, designed and built with power functions uh, in mind. I assume that Lego didn't include the power functions in this kit uh, simply to simply so they could offer a relatively large kit, a large complex kit uh, at a at a good. At a, at a good price point. This kit has 954 pieces, so it's a, it's a good size kit that's still pretty affordable. Uh, regardless, it's a nice kit even without the power functions included. Um, <clears throat> again, like I said, a Lego kind of shows here that they foresee the battery box being behind the cab and the motor being there at, at the lower part of the tow dolly. Um, I'll show you how I've incorporated these along with the uh, the control lever that's a part of the the power function kit. As you can see, oh, hold on. As you can see right here, the control lever. Uh, I did not include the the power function kit comes with LED lights here. I did not include those in the 9395. Uh, I intend to use those on the uh, 8090 supercar. Uh, I think the supercar is a better application for the LEDs. Anyway, here. Uh, on back to the, the 9395, they use the power functions to control the, the tow dolly itself, and then there's a winch here. I didn't use the winch. I felt the winch was a poor use of power function capability. So what I've done is I have used the undercarriage gearing for the winch and applied that to the powertrain of the truck. So my second power function feature drives the wheels of the tow truck and the the uh, engine that's under the hood. I'll show you that here in a few minutes. So here it is. We'll just get straight to it. So as you can see here, I've got the battery box right behind the uh, the cab, just as I suggested. I, when I was installing this, I had a bit of a problem with the the uh, steering shaft, uh, some interference with the steering shaft. So I overcame that by moving the entire roof line of the cab forward one slot on the connecting beam, and that uh, that freed up the problem I had with the steering ca uh, steering shaft. However, it did cause some problems with the way that the doors mounted and I was able to recover that and, and get the doors in there mounted, but they sort of lost their realistic functionality here. Uh, they don't really they don't really 
function the way they normally would. They kind of swing in and have, a, have an additional pivot point. But I can get them in there to where they look like they're supposed to be in there. So I was, I was happy with that. Um, you can see here, I have completely removed the winch. Uh, the upper portion of the winch is gone and instead I have installed the, uh, the control lever from the Power Functions kit. Uh, I think it looks decent the way that this mounted up here. Um, one of the drawbacks from the, the, the picture on the back of the truck, see, is, or on the back of the box, is they lost the, uh, the crossbar with the lights. And I thought that was a pretty neat feature. Uh, I had enough spare parts that I was able to actually recover that and, and get it back over the top of the battery box. It's a little bit taller than, than the, uh, the original design and it's a little higher over the cab, but I still think it looks pretty decent. All right, so back to the motor here <clears throat> on the back of the winch. So you can see I've got a little uh, a jig set up here to, to prop the, the back wheels off the table so I can demonstrate the function here in a bit. But the, I motored the, or, excuse me, mounted the motor here. Um, it mounted up very, very easily. It, uh, it took two pieces. I had to install an extra beam. I actually had a few extra beams that I was able to install but it mounted up uh, very easily. It's very sturdy. It has no twist or bend or, or uh, wiggle room in there at all. So, and, and there's a shaft that was already protruding that is what I meant when I said this model was designed and built for power function. I slid this directly onto the shaft that was protruding that then took the place of the normal manual lever that was, or not lever, the uh, shaft, the twisty shaft here that you would use to manually manipulate your power functions. I've, I've removed that now that I have that, now that I have the, uh, the motor. So, just real quick review for anyone who's not familiar. So the way that you shift or clutch the, the functions between one, uh, one to the next is this lever right here next to the driver's seat. When you shift it to the back, that aligns the power function to the tow dolly in the back. And when you shift it to the f forward here, that is what used to drive the winch, but now drives the wheels on the uh, and the powertrain on the truck here. So, so let's get this thing started and give you a quick demonstration of what I've done. So we'll go uh, neutral here. We will shift the battery on. Now one thing I did not do is when I installed the motor I did not mess with any of the gear ratios so all of the functions happen at a very quick pace and uh, that might be something I want to address at a later date is how quickly everything happens. So quick pull of the lever all right, let's get it in gear here. Quick pull of the lever lower the dolly, push it back, raises the dolly. So pretty quick but you can see how quick it is Again, that gearing ratio, I probably could have slowed that down some. So now, again, to uh, we shift this to the front. You'll see here that uh, I can go apply the power to the wheels now. One, one way is the uh, forward, pull the lever back, and I got reverse. Now, one of the neat things about the Technic models is when they do a... A trans or a rear end, they usually have a limited slip application. So, meaning limited slip means that if I have it, it sends the power to the wheel with the least resistance. So, I'm going to try to demonstrate here to show you that if I grab one wheel, the other wheel will stop, will continue to spin while the other wheel still has uh, power going to it. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to see this or not, but we'll try. So I can stop this wheel here with my finger. And you can see that that wheel is still spinning while this wheel is not. I let go of this one. It eventually picks back up due to inertia. Okay, and I can do the same thing here. I can stop this one and that one keeps going. So that's one of the neat features of the, uh, the differential. Now one of the other neat things about how I've got this set up is it's all connected in the, in the design and you can see the engine cycling there. I thought that's pretty neat. <clears throat> so that's it. Um, 
that's how I've incorporated this. So I, I've got, the way I've got this thing set up with the power function, it's obviously a, a not not a very playable model, meaning that it would be very difficult to play with it uh, with the way that that power function is is driven to the wheels. Um, I would need to incorporate a remote control and an IR receiver for the drivetrain, and then somehow power the steering. Um, I've seen several other Lego Technic videos where people have powered the steering. I'd like to get some feedback on how that is done. So please leave me some comments on that. Try to give me some feedback. Maybe give me some pointers on how some of you guys have done that. I'd like some feedback on um, what you guys think about this modification and overall. And ask me any questions down in the comment section. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Come back to my channel soon for some stop motion builds of the uh, Lego Technic crane truck. And I've also got the Unimog coming up here in the next few weeks. Take care.